record our meetings. Uh, it allows us to post them on our YouTube channel. We have found uh, it's been quite successful. People have been really grateful that they've been able to you know, go back and view them on their own time when they can't join us on a Monday night. Uh, and I will say that 100% uh, selfishly, uh, you can see that I'm flying Brutus here. Uh, I'm going to be leaving this meeting to watch the national championship game in about 45 minutes. So <laughs> we're going to move things along. I'll leave it open uh, if there's still some uh, business to be discussed or, or, or things that we haven't uh, addressed. Um, so I'm just going to jump right in, share my screen, uh, and share the deck for tonight. The deck for tonight is here. All right. Can everybody see that okay? All right. So welcome. Uh, January 11th, we are here, uh, Virtual Village meeting. This is our first of 2021. It is, uh, I don't remember, 9th, 10th, maybe. Uh, we've been doing a lot of these. We were uh, one of the early adopters of a virtual format. We have consistently kept our monthly cadence, uh, even so much so that we, we did one in August because we felt like, you know, there was just so much information that the city was putting out uh, and people wanted to know about, obviously, obviously you know, COVID-19. Yeah, COVID uh, somebody's echoing, there it goes. Thank you. Um, and, and just what the city has been doing and your options for testing and, and, and that sort of thing. So we had a meeting in August uh, because it, we just wanted to keep the momentum going. Uh, and I think it was, you know, quite successful. So. Uh, my name is Eric Hoffman. I'm the president of the, the VNA uh, for now uh, 2021. Um, and our board members are here Robinson, Holloway, Evelyn Chan, Irene Barnaby, Joe Vita, Peter Farrell, uh, Rob Crow is our founder, Marcus Koff, and, and Jason Eddins, uh, a few of whom can't join us tonight. Uh, but I did want to make one uh, important announcement, uh, which is to say that we have. Uh, been courting, I think that's probably the right word. Uh, we've been courting an individual to join our board um, because um, she has uh, a particular expertise um, relative to, you know, engineering and just savvy and intelligence. And I wanted to just welcome our newest board member uh, at large, Anya O'Dwyer, uh, who is my neighbor from across the street and is just a wonderful woman. And I, I'm thrilled that, that she is joining us for 2021. So welcome, uh, Anya. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate we, we, it. Good, we good we look forward voice. to your involvement. Yes, good to have you. We look forward to your yeah. involvement. We we certainly look forward to uh, you know hashing out all the fun things that we have to talk about uh, with you uh, joining us at the helm. Yep. Uh, so with, with that, I'm I'm going to jump over the COVID nineteen updates issue and and just get right to our, our very special guest, uh, Captain Benjamin Daly of the Jersey City Police Department. Welcome, uh, Captain Daly. It's it's really great to see you again. And 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 again, I'm so glad you're 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 up and about. You look well, man. Thank you, thank you. Um, let me start off by thanking everybody for the invite. Uh, specifically, Evelyn Chan. She reached out to me. I expressed that I wanted to come uh, to the last meeting, virt virtual meeting that you had, but um, I was already out of town doing a training um for the job. But unfortunately, I, then I caught COVID, and then it was everything went downhill. But I'm back up and running. And basically, like I said to Evelyn, I believe this is the new wave of the future, actually dealing with, um, you know, having meetings this route. So I'm glad that I'll tell you guys, you're the first virtual meeting that I have done <laughs> with any of the meetings, any of uh, the associations down in, um, in uh, you know, the East. So it's fun. You guys are my first. I'm actually We happy. love that. <laughs> you guys Yay! are. I'm going to start trying to do this more often. I just got to get used to it. It's still a little new to me. Uh, I can read the mutes and the stop signs and everything. But I'll give you a brief rundown on everything that's going on in uh, the East as far as uh, new personnel that we have, different things like that as far as what we're doing. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to be brief because I haven't been at work for the past uh, month. I would say <laughs> I've actually been out. But I do have, you know, a bit of information for you. I'll start off by saying there's a uh, few of the people uh, Evelyn knows. We do have a new community relations officer. Um, she's a newer, younger officer who I'm actually uh, happy to be molding and helping her, um, you know, learn. If we, if you all met Dina, Dina was like a, just a godsend. She was a, a great, uh, just a helping hand to me. Like, it's very hard to fill her shoes, but I do believe that I have someone who's capable. What I'm looking to do with this person is actually mold her and actually uh, have her more involved with the community. I'm also looking at getting more than one community relations officer so we can actually, you know, serve more people. That was one thing that I saw with Dina that she had her hands full so much that I believe she needed more help so we can address more issues. But unfortunately, she's um, 
not wouldn't be wasn't able to make this meeting, but uh, we'll uh, if you speak to Evelyn, you can get an email and send her whatever you want. I'm going to be uh, heavily involved with helping her and grooming her to help you as a you know community. Also, who I have actually on here, my um, I have a new executive officer. His name is Lieutenant Christopher Howard. I'm very happy to have him because he's a person who um, he's a worker. He's a person who really wants to work and help people. When I actually called him to ask him to be my executive officer, he gave me the exact answer that I was looking for. I'm tired of being where I'm at and I wanna be somewhere where I can do something to make a difference. So I'm very happy to have him with me. He's on his call tonight. So he's gonna, um, you're gonna get the meet and talk with him, but I'm like, I'm just ecstatic about having him. Uh, that's like some of the big major changes that I have. I actually finally have help in a lot of aspects the way I didn't have community relations, uh, a consistent um, person to deal with you. And Crystal, if you send her email, she's very responsive. What I like about her is I have her working in a radio call so she can actually address problems the way like if you say something's happening, she's out during that time in a radio car being able to patrol and help you. So that's the new route I'm going to with. Now it's not just like a set position where like something's happening on a weekend and you don't have an officer who's happening on a weekend. You have an officer who's out there seeing the problem. What I've found a lot of times is a lot of times when people have uh, complaints, they see it from one end. So now we can see it from both ends when we're addressing it. And that's the route I'm going with community relations. I want all of my officers to be able to meet you. I would like for everybody to be able to come to this meeting and be here with me so they can actually get the feel and speak to you guys the same way that I am. So that's something that I'm working on uh, moving forward, but it's a, it's a work in progress. I'm starting with Crystal and I plan on molding like a good two or three, four more offices so I can have a unit within my district to actually help you. And basically whatever problems you have, they will be the people who are the community that will, will be a part of it. Another thing that I actually heard in the beginning is the whole uh, being a member. Is there any way I can be an, an honorary member of um, the VNA, I'm, I'm just wondering. We would love that. <laughs> we would love that. I know you say four meetings. I don't, I'll try to make four, but I just want to know, like, if, can I get like a, a pass? I don't really live down there. I live in the South District, but um, yeah, I like to get an honorary pass. I, I, I work down there. I'm, I mean, I'm here every day. I think that'd be good. <laughs> I, I like the idea of honorary membership, Captain Daly. All right. What I'll do. I, my XO, he's on. I'm gonna let him actually uh, get a chance to introduce himself. Let him give you his, um, you know, his resume. He's a real good guy. I think you guys will like him. He's actually got more time on than me, and I, I actually enjoy that because I get to learn a lot from him. He's a very knowledgeable person. He's working um different aspects of the job, different things to where it will help us deal with a lot of problems because he has experience in every um part of the department that, you know, certain places I haven't been. So it, it really gives me that um experience and it helps me learn. So. Uh, without further ado, uh, Chris, you in there? You're there. You're on mute, my friend. I think he's going. Just uh, unmute yourself, Chris. <laughs> I think he having problems like me. Go to the microphone. <laughs> All right. All right. Do you hear me now? Hey, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, how you doing? My name is Chris Halvett. I'm a lieutenant. I work under the squad captain. I've been on a job about uh, 28 years. I've basically worked in every uh, aspect of the job, narco, housing, truancy, uh, uh, you name it, I worked in it. Uh, but I'm still, I still learn new things every day. So I'm glad to be in the East District. I worked in a radio car here for about maybe two years. And it's, uh, I don't know, I'm very glad to be back. Thank you. It's a good thing about this, like you said, he's got experiences that I haven't had. I've never worked in narcotics, so a lot of parts of our district, some parts of our district have narcotics issues. He can actually be a guy who trains our younger officers. A, fair, a problem that we run into a bit is a lot of our younger officers don't have the training. And we're, our department has grown so fast that we don't have a lot of knowledgeable people like Chris running around who can specifically teach them. So I'm happy that he's someone who wants to work and actually give that knowledge out to be able to, you know, further serve you. Um, having so many, working in so many different aspects of the job, he does have a good community relations skill to where he can actually speak to people. And he's just a, a nice guy. I really enjoy having him um, by my side. So it's just a great thing. Chris, how do you spell your last name, bud? I'll let H-O-W-L-E-T-T. -T. Thank you, sir. Um, yes. Can I just ask a question to both of you gentlemen? Uh, and this isn't necessarily one you need to answer right now, but it's something that, you know, as a neighborhood association, we 
we like to think we have a little bit of clout and we can advocate for certain things. So if there are things that you need and you uh, would like, you know, uh, a, a community neighborhood association like ourselves to advocate for you, please, please let us know. Because obviously, you know, our lives are, are made better with better police enforcement. Um, and, and, you know, we, we completely support the Jersey City Police Department and, and we thank you for, for your service and everything that you're doing. But let us know if we can help you. Thank you very I much. It's really good to hear. My thing is with the current climate, I love hearing stuff like that. And this is why I would love like for a lot of my uh, younger officers to be able to be in these meetings so they can actually hear that sentiment from you because sometimes they get down and I, I usually tell them every day, you forget how much of the public actually loves you. There's a lot of people who really appreciate us and I really appreciate the public. Like um, every day when I get to speak to different people, I'm continuously learning because they teach me different things as far as about how the world is changing in different parts of society. So that's why I would really love to be able to get my uh, guys to come to your meeting. Usually when I go in person, I bring police officers there with me just so they can actually see the faces. Because a lot of times when we deal with people, we only deal with them in a negative atmosphere. And sometimes I will say it does get the real in you and it makes you cynical. But they don't get to meet the positive people like yourself that actually want to work out and fix problems. I love these meetings because most of the people who come to the meeting, for the most part, they actually want to fix and make their neighborhood better. People don't come to these meetings to be like, oh, well, you know, I just want to come here and be a heckler. Not to say you don't have those people. But for the oh, moment. yeah. Just wait till we have a big development project. <laughs> <laughs> That's when the hecklers come out. <laughs> Not to say you don't have them, but for the most part, usually when I come to these meetings, it's people who have legitimate problems who want them to fix. So I really enjoy it, and I enjoy trying my best to help them too. Thank you. We we totally appreciate that, and and I couldn't agree more. Uh, the people that uh, have been joining our meetings uh, are are just wonderful neighbors. Hi, honey. Uh, and yes, like like like. Like you, you know, we all have the the sentiment that we're just trying to make our, our neighborhood a better place. Um, so I, I thank you both again for, you know, for for what you're doing. I, I know being on duty is is a, is a difficult job, and the fact that you you know got COVID as a result of it is you know tested to that. So th thank you, thank you both for for everything you do. And uh, Mr. Howlett, I, I look I look forward to to speaking with you more. I'm, I'm sorry we're not in person and can't shake hands and all that fun stuff, but. Um, <laughs> one day so one day love so. you guys we wouldn't defund a dollar from you so you know we would we would go the other way i think you need support you need help and uh, and we're, we're here for you just to let us know if there's you know anything we can help advocate for feel better and um membership for pba cards let's do it <laughs> <laughs> wow i think that bribery was just recorded <laughs> let's go <laughs> let's negotiate <laughs> just kidding just kidding does anyone have any questions? Um, yes. So how, how do we report, maybe everybody should know, how do we report a, like stolen packages? What is the protocol for that? I think that's like a major thing in the village, right? I think stolen packages. And if you guys have anything to like let us know about, I guess, crime or anything that's happening in the village that we might not be aware of. With the stolen packages, I'll actually give you like a, a general rundown of what's, what's going on from a police standpoint in the East. With the stolen packages, what you would want to do is call 547-5477. That's something just to report for us to document it, what's going on. Right about now, I'm going to be honest with you, since COVID hit, it's really affected policing um, in a, a, just a, a drastic way. Meaning there are a lot of quality of life issues that we didn't have to deal with that we're now dealing with. The homeless population has increased like ridiculously, like to where um, a lot of the package thefts come from homeless people. Uh, homeless people, a lot of break-ins, a lot of different things that are happening now because we have um, that increased population of homeless now. Um, I, a lot of the people who are now here, they're not the regular homeless, they're transients. They came from, they're coming from different areas. So it's something to where now we're trying to actually, you know, combat it. What I've been having my officers do is actually we provide them with the pamphlets. We try to do outreach for them. We're actually trying to actually uh, get names for them, like the areas that they be in, the name that, that they are located in, um, and actually put a database together for all the homeless people. This is so for a couple reasons. One, for when we, uh, let's say, something does happen in that area and that person may be a suspect. Two, for if we actually can take that, that information and uh, give it to 
our, our homeless outreaches where they can come in and actually, you know, try to give the people help. Because now I'm seeing, I've seen families, I've seen different people that I haven't seen normally in this area. So it's a big problem. You know, people are losing their jobs and it's like, um, it's a shame. You know, I, it's not a crime to be homeless or so we want to try to help them as much as possible. Um, the other issue, as far as like the package thefts, this is another problem that we're running into. The courts have are on some sort of a delay, in my opinion. Like, uh, I guess because of COVID restrictions, a lot of courts aren't up to, um, to function, I should say. They're not functioning at 100%. So a lot of times, and this was even before that with the bail reform, we arrest people with the package thefts. We actually arrest a lot of people. Unfortunately, a lot of times when we catch them, they've probably stolen your packages already. Some of these people, because they get let back out, it's like a catch and release. You catch them and they come back out and do the same thing again. So what we're trying to do is get to a point where like we can actually get more, I guess, notify you more of your areas, different things and what to look out for. And I'll give you a little bit of that. And it's according to the people who, who are at home at these times. You probably won't pay attention to it, but you'll have people who they're walking up and down the streets. Guess what you can actually do? If you give us a call and you see somebody during certain times when they're following, you know, the mail vans, because this is what they do. They find the mail vans routes, the Amazon, they find the routes and the times that your package get delivered. Most people get their package delivered at a certain time. Meaning if you're getting something from UPS, the UPS truck comes to your block the same time. The postal service block comes to your block the same time. If you actually pay attention, you'll see people who follow those vans. You as a neighbor could call and say, we have a suspicious male who's walking up and down the street. You basically know everyone who lives in your area and you'll see a person who's walking who doesn't belong in the area. It's okay for you to call. It's okay for you to call. You can say, listen, I wanna remain anonymous. We don't need your name, nothing like that. We just do police work, meaning we'll follow that person. We'll actually sit from another area and see, you know, if we can see him go up on the porch or walking or if he's basically pacing back and forth and we'll check him out. A lot of the times what I'll say to you is this, with package thefts, most of the people who steal packages, it's not like anyone in this, this group chat is going out to steal packages today. It's the same people. So nine times out of 10, we've arrested some of these people before. So if you yeah. call, you probably know who he is. So if you call and my guys will actually make these arrests all the time, they're gonna go, all right, that's what's the name. That's this guy. So they'll basically already know that, you know what, I'm just going to wait for them and we'll stay in the area and say, but from there, a lot of times when you're going home, you're not looking for these things, but pay attention to like uh, the postal route, the UPS route and the times, that'd be something that can help us. And when you see it, you say, listen, I got a suspicious mail. It looks like he may be following the postal vehicle or, you know, he's in this area. I know everyone in my neighborhood, which is, this is what these meetings should be accomplishing, helping us know each other knowing your block, knowing who belongs and who does in the times and things like that. It's not being nosy, it's looking out for your neighbor. So think of that when you actually seeing different things, meeting people, just say hello to everybody. A lot of times I'm in out of uniform, I say hello to everyone. They don't necessarily say hello back to me, but it's one of the things that I like to do where I say, I wave and just say hello. And it's one, get to know your, the people that you live around. Once you have a good community and a neighborhood, um, I think it's something that it can actually help this um, aspect from the crime. Cause it's not always about fighting crime. It's just about knowing who your neighbor is. A lot of times you may not know, you know? So it's something that I think if you want your neighborhood to get better, try to get out and meet everybody in your neighborhood. This is a good thing we have. Yeah, I'll, I'll just jump in and say, I think it's great advice. And we've talked about this in the last couple of uh, virtual meetings, you know, uh, where, this question has, has come up uh, with you know concerned community members and, and our response has always been the best way to combat it is to be aware um, and look out for your neighbors you know like for example you know you're out walking the dog you see a package that's left ring that doorbell you know you never know they may actually be home and it just got dropped I mean any way to shorten the window that something sits outside um, you know is, is going to help so I appreciate that that's that's really solid advice. I'll tell you, my package gets stolen in the South a lot. That's why I started sending everything <laughs> to precinct. <laughs> Smart. Yeah. Not too many, not, not too many guys wearing backpacks walking by the precinct. I would imagine. No, I don't think I haven't. Had, I haven't lost one yet. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? What do we? Hey, uh, this is Danny Victor. Hey, Danny, there you are. Oh, you got your shirt on. Yep, it's a nice tonight. 
my shirt i got brutus flying man. Oh, this, thing, brutus. this thing belongs in a yard <laughs> brutus if everything was good i'd be down there uh mr hey captain um i had a question um the city does a great job of uh we when me and my neighbors or my neighbors and i report like the this graffiti that always pops up on uh this uh former grocery store but these these guys they just keep on hitting it for some reason, like they'll go from one side because it's on a corner. It's uh, the old Marindelli. They'll okay. hit it on the corner where I could see it. And then like, you know, the guys come up and clean it, thankfully. And then they'll hit the other side and they just, you know, they just keep playing this game. What would you, I don't have a camera for that angle. I'm known for having cameras on everything and seeing everything. But, um, you know, it's, it's just something that's been popping up all the time. Uh, what would you suggest? That's a tough one because without camera footage, I would have to actually know the time. You think a 24 hour window to actually watch the area, it, would be, uh, it wouldn't be uh, efficient. So it's hard to not uh, to address that without knowing the time when it's happening, having the hours. I would actually tell you like, if I had more of a, um, a direct window to address it, we could focus on it a little bit more. It seems like it's someone who actually lives in the area or knows the area who keeps coming back to that specific area. Um, yeah. But uh, it would be hard to address without having more like a, a window to be able to tell you that I would be able to directly address it for you. It's always overnight. I mean, I could time it because it's been I, like I've lived here since uh, September 2017 and I've seen it quite a while and uh, reported it. But I've, I've always known when it would occur um, because um, because I, uh, you know, I, I could see it from my window. I have all these big windows here. So okay. like, um, I'll. Uh, I'll make sure to um, to make sure to note it down and stuff like that. And uh, if it's on the side that I can view from my, uh, well, actually, no, my cameras won't. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm doing a renovation soon, but I'm gonna have cameras on that side, so they're gonna have problems soon. But um, uh, yeah, I'll start trying to make a notation of it and get that out to you. But it's yeah. always overnight. Like I want to say, uh, probably between three and three and six. Okay. Well, like I said, um, you could actually forward that information. Evelyn, she has all of our email, uh, emails. She has uh, mine, Howlett's, and um, uh, Crystal Rodriguez. You can forward that information to us, and we could actually look into setting up a cops to where they can actually pay attention during those specific peak hours to when, when it's actually happening. I like that you actually brought up cameras, too, because that's something that actually helps us in policing. Whoever has cameras, you can actually, you know, it'd be something as far as we can actually get, like, a, a list of who all has cameras if you want to. I'm not force forcing anyone, but if you'd like to, it'd be something that would uh, actually help us in, um, you know, the area as far as when we're actually investigating, especially for package steps and things like that, so where we can actually view and see maybe the route that the person did, maybe they went somewhere else. So the cameras are very helpful. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm, everybody knows me. I got this traffic and this stop sign here because I kept showing up emailing the councilman videos about car accidents. So, but I don't, but I don't have cameras on that angle. But I'm planning on getting like a couple, so uh, that'd be very this renovation. So we'll see. Thank you. Um, another thing, Evelyn brought it up to me, and I'd like to uh, let everyone know. Everyone know that the Watts app is not um being is not in use right right now, right? Mm. Um, yes. She basically, uh, what happened is it, logistically it wasn't um it has we have a few problems with it as far as uh, technical issues the way we're not able to use it at this point in time. Um, we will let you know when it's back up and running, but it was a few things to where the calls weren't coming in accurately to where it was safety issues for the police officers responding to them. So they had to actually go pull the kinks out of it. Okay. So we're not using the watch right about now. So from a police standpoint, we are not using the watch, the word on the street app. All right. Uh, thank you for that. Yeah, I think we heard that last month that it was, you know, currently out of commission, but uh, thanks. Appreciate the, the update on that. Anybody else? All right. Uh, <laughs> Captain Daly, uh, Lieutenant Howlett, I, I can't thank you enough for, for spending your time with us on, on this Monday evening. Uh, and I, I wish you both well. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us if there's anything that You'd like us to advocate for on your behalf you just want to say hi uh anything like that 
I will tell you this, I'm, I'm very happy to be here and do my job and just be able to help people. I know, unfortunately, some of the problems you, you uh, present to me are very, very uh, complicated, so they don't get fixed overnight. <laughs> I apologize for you. It's very hard to catch people in the act of doing things. But I will tell you this, I do try my best whenever um, something's brought to my attention. I really do try to address it. Sometimes you may not see it. It may, it may not be to your liking, but I really do uh, try, and I try to have all my personnel with me try. So continue to um, you know, believe in us, support us, send us whatever you need or whatever, the, any, any, anything you need. And truth of the matter is, I don't need you to advocate for me. This is my job, I enjoy doing it. Um, I, I like that you guys support us. That means so much to me. Um, I know it means a lot to Chris. For me, it's just, you know, I, I still have faith in um, everyone, you know, the whole economy, society, all the people to where I know a lot of good people support us and I really believe that. So thank you for your support. That's all I really need. I don't, we don't need any advocate for anything. Um, I'm happy to have your support. That you have. Thank you, gentlemen. I really appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. All right, guys. Uh, you have a good one. It was nice to get to talk to everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you look, for joining us. Look forward to the next one. Then. And right. uh, we'll, we'll be in touch about uh, your honorary membership. <laughs> all right. <laughs> for one. sure. Thanks, gentlemen. Take care. All the best. All right. All right, all. Uh, let's jump in. Uh, okay. Um, we did the VNA board. Uh, we did the JCPD. Let's do the COVID-19 updates um, because there are some important ones here. So um, Tableau, as we learned, you know, last uh, month from the Office of uh, Innovation here in Jersey City, is the uh, dashboard that they put together to track um, COVID-19 cases. Uh, I want to just flash the slide from, from last month about uh, testing, where you can get tested. Briefly talk about the CDC guidelines, because they have changed. There are some subtle changes to the CDC guidelines. Um, and then uh, vaccine, 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 uh, and face coverings uh, is a pretty straightforward one there. So let's just take a look at that, um, the Tableau data. Oh man, I had it here. All right, that's fine, it's right there. Okay, um, again, this is the dashboard that uh, the Jersey City Office of Innovation has helped uh, create. And you know, you can see like, what we're hearing in the news and what we're seeing uh, around us and, and hearing from those that we know uh, is, is a real thing. Uh, you know, just high level, if you go back to, you know, uh, end of March, early April, when we were, you know, ostensibly at our peak uh, with 268 new cases uh, in, a, in, a, in that particular day, uh, we're at 270. So, you know, we did a great job flattening the curve. You know, all this was spectacular people, they listened, uh, they socially distanced, uh, they wore face coverings. Uh, and, and now, you know, I think some of this is fatigue, uh, some of it's irresponsibility, um, but, you know, I, I'm just gonna say something on that and, and forgive me for, for sounding a little preachy, but, um, you know, I feel like uh, one of the things that, that we really need to be doing is, is obviously being smart and, and, and knowing who, uh, who we are around. Uh, but one of the things that um, I want something today about the new CDC guidelines and, and, and really the guidelines are, are, are pretty straightforward. Um, the, the six foot social distancing uh, is something that uh, is recommended for, um, believe it or not, it's recommended for outdoor engagement. Um, they're recommending, you know, an increase of that to 10 feet for indoor engagement because uh, the, the amount of air circulation uh, in an indoor space is critical to the spread uh, of this particular virus. Um, so, you know, open windows, running fans. Uh, we actually bought an air purifier because uh, my daughter is in a, a very tiny bubble group with two other friends where they sit with a tutor a few times a week and, you know, they wear masks and they do their schoolwork. But, you know, we got an air purifier that does like some 400 changes of the volume of air in this room uh, an hour and does the HEPA filtration. But uh, my, my point very simply is, is please be careful of the, the indoor gatherings. Um, you know, we're past the holiday season, right? So uh, if you did or if you didn't, uh, don't beat yourself up, uh, you know, go visit family or, or do what we were asked not to do. I, I get it, everybody gets it. <laughs> but uh, the quickest way we're gonna get out of this because, you know, yes, we have a vaccine, but I think the reality is, you know, we're still several months 
um, off from getting to a comfort level where you know we can we can shake hands and, and sit in the same room uh, uh, with those that we haven't been uh, hunkering down with you know throughout the duration of this. So that, that's all I'll say about that. Um, that's really what I wanted to say about the CDC guidelines. The other thing that I thought was very interesting is you know you remember back in the beginning of this pandemic uh, there was a huge focus uh, on surfaces and, and cleaning surfaces, and I. Uh, I was really given pause when when this particular segment, uh, and, and this was a doctor who was giving uh, this update on the CDC guidelines, but you know what she said is that there haven't been confirmed cases of COVID-19 being contracted via surfaces. And I didn't necessarily believe that. So I'm just gonna put that one out there, but I, I believe that that's still a, a way to transmit the virus. However, it's been downplayed significantly, right? So they're saying you don't need to wash, your, you don't need to wipe your groceries, you don't need to do that sort of thing. Uh, but um, everyone, you know, you need to be vigilant about services that doorknobs, you know, you're on the train, you grab that pole, any of that stuff, right? Um, th this is all still very real. Uh, it's still highly transmissible. The new variant of the virus uh, is even more transmissible. So let's just continue to be smart, hunker down. I know we're all getting kind of, you know, bat blank crazy uh, for those that aren't able to go, you know, enjoy the company of other humans. But let's uh, please be smart about it. Continue to be vigilant, you know, use the hand sanitizer and all that sort of thing. Um, these are all things that you know. Uh, on the vaccine, what I wanted to share with you uh, is, uh, if you're not aware, uh, Jersey City has created a, uh, a vaccine registration. Um, where in, where to go, where to go, there it is. So at covidvaccine.nj.gov, you can go to this website and you can register. You don't need to uh, you know, do anything at this, at this moment. Uh, but registering on this website, I, I want to recommend it for everyone because as we know, the vaccine rollout is not as fast as, as, as medical professionals are saying it should be. We need to get it out there, uh, but we certainly want to be responsible about it and not take spots away from somebody that is higher risk than we are. What this does is you, you go on this and I'll, I mean, I've already done it, but I'll just sort of click it so you can see it. Um, you know, you, you, you tell it you want to start the process um, and then of course you fill out this thing to tell it that you're not a robot. Um, and then uh, what it's going to do is it's going to ask you some basic information, personal information about yourself, uh, which again, I've already done. So it probably won't let me do this again. But the next page after this is a series of questions that you need to answer. And it's very simple. Uh, you know, what do you do for work? Uh, that that sort of thing. And, and you can click a number of categories. So, you know, personally for me, I, I clicked construction because I'm on a job site three times a week uh, and media because I work for a media company. Um, and I, uh, three or four days later, got an email uh, and a text because I included my phone number and said, yes, please text me updates. And it said, uh, you are phase 1C. So we're in phase 1A right now. Uh, there will be phase 1B uh, and then phase 1C. So I'm guessing I'm eligible in a month or so. Uh, and then phase 2 follows phase 1C, uh, wherein that's the entirety of the general population. Uh, I believe it's age 16 to 65 or something like that. Um, so I would encourage everyone to just go on and register um, so that you, you know, you get a notification. Um, you know, I, I've known several people that are uh, in the phase 1A category that didn't actually realize they were until they registered for this and filled out, you know, yes, you know, I'm a social worker for public schools, and then they got the thing back that says you are in fact phase 1A. So um, the other thing to know uh, is uh, there are two vaccines, as you know, there's the Pfizer and there's the Moderna. Um, I'm not going to editorialize. I'm just going to give you what I understand to be factual information. The Pfizer uh, vaccine requires a very uh, bespoke type of uh, refrigeration, uh, specific type freezers in order to keep that um, in, in, in a, a proper state, uh, whereas the Moderna vaccine does not. Uh, I encourage everyone to research it because it's not like you go to one particular vaccination site and they ask you which one do you want. It doesn't work that way. Each vaccination site has one or the other. Um, so um, I know people that have gone to the vaccination site in Kearney, uh, which is um, distributing the Moderna vaccine. Uh, and it was uh, an absolute like treat of an experience. You know, you never left your car, you drove up, there were sheriffs there, there were nurses there. Um, the, 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 the woman uh, that was, uh, conveying this to me, you know, so, so the first person that came to the car said, welcome to Disneyland. You know, like 
it's just this whole operation, but everybody there was super nice. Um, you know, you, you show your registration for, for that day. Uh, they line up a series of cars, five wide, two deep. Uh, it's a warehouse, the garage doors open, you drive in, they close the doors behind you. You know, you've already taken your coat off at this point. They come, they give you the shot. They talk to you for a minute, you go out uh, the back doors, they open those up, you drive out and you sit in your car for 15 minutes for observation to make sure that, you know, there's not some side effect or some uh, ill thing that's happening to your body immediately that, uh, you know, would endanger yourself uh, or others uh, when you leave. Uh, and that's it. And, uh, and then you, you know, you have the, the schedule to come back for the, for the booster, if you will, the, the second shot. So uh, by all means, uh, everybody should be registering on this because, you know, the quicker that uh, I can go hang out with uh, Robinson and Jim, uh, we can all get vaccinated so we can, <laughs> we, can, we, can we can see humans together okay Jim <laughs> uh, and then this is the testing site way too much information for a meeting of this sort uh, we will of course post this uh, on our website uh, and include it on our YouTube channel but these are the locations where you can get tested um, the testing I have had great success with the public safety headquarters on Marin Boulevard I've been half a dozen times or more um, they're open from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. I typically arrive around 3.45 p.m. Uh, because you're in and out in about five minutes uh, at that time. If you choose to go right when they open at 8, you probably will, it'll probably take you an hour for the turnaround. Um, but literally uh, toward the end of the day, uh, you, you're, 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 just, you're just in and out. And that, that's been that way consistently. Uh, next, I want to just jump into development updates. We want to make people aware uh, for those of you that don't live, you know, on my stretch of First Street uh, and didn't get a certified letter, which well, we didn't get one either, but I guess that's because we're across the street. Uh, but uh, I believe Anya got one. Um, I know Jill got one. Uh, that is for the properties directly across the street, 389 First Street. This is that development that's uh, encompassing three current uh, abandoned buildings. Um, it's a development that we, we, we loved as much as we've ever loved the development as the Village Neighborhood Association, I will say. Uh, there were pieces about it that uh, we questioned. There were requests that we made, specifically uh, a reduction of a roof deck, the positioning of the roof deck to keep it off the street, uh, the uh, increase of uh, green roof elements because they were requesting additional lot coverage. Uh, which we are working on communication with the city just to put that on the radar that this is a much larger issue for the city as a whole if we continue to allow uh, you know lot coverage uh, variances to be passed we will eventually be kind of eroding our permeable surfaces uh, which is going to be a real problem in the long run but the planning board also had similar comments they added a ton of uh, additional greenery on the roof they literally Re reconfigured the roof deck almost precisely the way I sort of sketched it loosely on a plan and sent it back to them. Uh, it kind of blew my mind. They just did everything that we asked them to do. And it is an as of right building with parking uh, that is as of right in the R5. So there are, as I said, variances for, for lot coverage. Um, but this is a project that uh, we support. We just want to ask some questions about the positioning of a curb cut relative to the fire hydrant that's uh, here. Uh, to make sure that you know we're not losing more street parking spaces than we need to uh, as a result of that design. Uh, and then the second one that we just wanted to get on people's radar is of course uh, the Marcellus uh, uh, lofts, the, the Marcellus proposal that, that we saw and, and, and spoke with the developer uh, last month as well. They were punted from the agenda last month and uh, they are uh, anticipated to be on the agenda this month. I haven't found it yet. I'll just be perfectly transparent on that. Um, but it's 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 got to be there. Uh, I just didn't see if it's on this planning board meeting or the next. Uh, so that mean specifically that is to say that the planning board meeting uh, we just had one last week. The next one is on January 19. There is uh, a zoning board meeting. Uh, this week on the 14th, and then another one in January on the 28th. Uh, you can see here when the city council uh, is meeting uh, and the Jersey City Environmental Commission uh, is meeting tomorrow. And I hope you enjoy this background picture. This is a snippet from uh, our holiday card this year. <laughs> um, okay, uh, I've done a lot of talking. Uh, I'm going to be departing shortly. I would just ask uh, that we jump into an open forum. Uh, I've made Joe Vita the co-host of this meeting so that he could get into the 
technical aspects of the Zoom and allow people to rename themselves. So Joe, thank you for doing that. Um, by all means, I wanna leave the floor open to everyone, uh, but I wanna say happy 2021, everyone. I apologize, I'm selfishly leaving early, um, but uh, I really look forward to, uh, to next month. And please uh, board members, let me know what went on, okay? Ida, hi. It's nice to see you. I didn't. Uh, I didn't get to say hello to you. I'm so. I'm so thrilled that you've joined the last two meetings after we first had you on. So, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for welcoming me. It's a pleasure. Well, it's so good to have you. It's, it's, happy New it's Year really, to everyone. Yeah, Happy New Year to everyone. Right. And Ben, you're here too, man. It's always. How always are you, Eric? Happy New Year. Ha happy New Year, bud. Thank you very much for having me. All right. By all means. Um, Robinson or Joe, if you wouldn't mind, uh, you know, just sort of hosting a, an open forum and, and let me know what sort of things we need to be working on for next time. I'm happy to, um, uh, if you want to stop sharing your screen. If you're right, let's start leave. there. Okay. okay. I'm going to end, I'm going to leave and I'm going to make. Me too. I'm rooting for Ohio State. Robinson Holloway oh. is the side. Okay. Bye everyone. Thanks. Go Bucks! Yeah, I'm watching the game. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. All right. All right. Bye to everybody who's watching football. Um, for those people who aren't uh, or who can join it later, um, if there's anything in the going on in the village you want to discuss, this is the time to bring it up. Um, to also let you know, next month in our February meeting, and we meet on the second Monday of the month. So I think it is the 8th of February. Um, We'll, we'll be, we have a, apparently a very packed agenda, but one of the things we'll be talking about is Mary Benson Park. So bring your ideas about Mary Benson Park, questions about Mary Benson Park. We're actually going to be sending out in the next couple of weeks a survey monkey to um, get people's ideas about Mary Benson Park and how you use it or how you wish you could use it. Um, there are definitely some changes going on in the park that um, are planned, and there are some that we would like to affect. Um, we've talked about perhaps having a farmer's market there. At any rate, next month is when we're going to be talking about Mary Benson Park, and um, Michelle will be with us, who is the goddess of Mary Benson Park, I believe is her official title. But um, if anybody wants to talk about anything, now's your time. Unmute. I think Michelle is also the queen of the cemetery as well. <laughs> Has what is the current status of the? Um, uh, I don't I don't know a whole lot about this subject, but the the flooding that was happening in Mary Benson is that has that been uh, addressed or is it better, worse, the same? Any plans? Um, if anybody has specific knowledge, I don't believe that it has actually been addressed. I think it has been talked about. Um, when we saw the, um, I think a couple of months ago, we saw the plans that the city had kind of long term for things like that. We were down the road a few years. Um, you know, as part of the problem with the area is it's not owned by one entity. Part of the park is owned by the city, part of the park is owned by Conrail, Turnpike Authority controls part of it. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a challenge, but I don't believe anything has actually been done about it um, specifically. Does anybody know? A lot of the flooding is from the Turnpike. So they, the Turnpike Authority was addressing um, their, air, their uh, drainage underneath the turnpike. Hopefully, um, we'll see some difference. The school, put in those school. Those are great. Yeah, but anyway. Yeah. So I'm not sure that was a good answer, but um, I guess we'll see with the next rainstorm. <laughs> yeah, I just. I thought it was a good answer. <laughs> no, we don't know entirely. Yeah. We think the turnpike might be doing something, but. Um, yeah, you know what? Uh, since that's that affects Mary Benson Park hugely, I think that will definitely be a topic, and we'll research what is being done or what is being planned for uh, next month's meeting. Okay. Can you ask if anyone's been affected by the 
pretty. My husband just asked, not realizing that we are unmuted. Unmuted. Uh, we, there is a um, in on Brunswick, uh, the where old Madame Claude used to be, the Gotham West building. There, they are curing their floors, and so they have these enormous heaters that are like jet engines. Yeah, um, propane heaters that are sound like jet engines, and I haven't gotten sleep for two days. And I'm wondering, has anyone else been buying? Yeah, I just wondered. I mean, it's it is going to end in a couple of weeks, but just wondering if anybody else in the village who's on this call um, has been affected by it. Damn. Oh, just us. Wow. It's it goes on 24 hours a day. It's noisy. Um anyway. All right. Um I'm going to shut down the meeting unless somebody's got something to say. Oh. All right. Do they have to second that? <laughs> yeah. No, I think we're good. Um <laughs> Thank you all. Happy New Year and um, stay healthy, stay safe, and hopefully we have a few more vaccine vaccine stories by February 8th when we see you again. Thanks, thanks guys. Good night. Good night, Thank everyone. You. Thank you all. Thank you. Good night. Good year. Good night. Okay. I'm going to pause the recording, sweetie. I'm, I'm the one who's in charge. I'm oh, so. sorry.